Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Melanie. Thank you for joining me here for my pagan plan with me for the month of May. I'm using this fancy little green piece of paper just to block out some of my personal information that's on this page for April. And we're going to start on the cover page for May. I always tend to end up with just one last page that's empty. And I don't like to start my calendar for the month on the right hand side of the book. I like it on the left hand side of the page so that I can have my notes and my trackers for that month on the right hand side. You'll see what I mean here in a moment, but this page is just going to be a very simple cover page. Our color palette for this month is going to be just some bright yellows with a little bit of an accent of green and of course my black fine tip pen. May is insanely busy for me. It's a good thing though, here on the homestead, we have all of our gardens going. We are getting some chicks in this year. There's a lot of good, wonderful, exciting things occurring. So it is not a overwhelming, stressful busy. It is a creative and full of life and energy and very exuberant type of busy. So I'm not complaining whatsoever. That being said, there is some prioritizing that needs to occur, so this month is not the most detail-oriented or most artistically inclined spread that I have ever created. Nonetheless, I am really happy with how easy it was to create this spread and subsequently how quickly this spread was created. That has been my kind of go-to for my bullet journal this year. I want to have some fun with it, but I don't really enjoy the pressure of creating something intricate and beautiful each month. I like to have quick and easy spreads that are just cute and fill me up with joy when I look at them without feeling like they are burdensome to create. I do feel like I've struck a very good balance in this 2022 bullet journal so that I can enjoy pretty things while also not feeling obligated and burdened to create said pretty things. I am still refining and working on my morning routine. It is simultaneously getting bigger, but also getting more specific. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense to someone who's not doing the practices, but I have really honed in and refined what I'm working on and I'm very happy with it. Each month I do make slight changes and that is honestly the method I would recommend to you, creating a morning routine or monthly trackers that are adjustable and changeable to your schedule. These types of trackers and morning practices are meant to serve you, not the other way around. So keep that in mind when you're starting a new habit or setting a new goal. This is supposed to make your life better and make your mental, physical, or emotional health more optimized. It's not supposed to add a burden and stress you out. So with that in mind, I'm excited to try out my morning routine for this coming month of May. We are doing a vertical style calendar with some very cute flowers in the corner. I have not based these flowers off of anything. I was going to call them daisies, but that's not accurate. They are just very simple, roughly drawn flowers that I find cute and make me think of things like dandelions and lilies and all of that good stuff that spring tends to bring. A few things that I am keeping track of for the month of May would be my journaling, yoga, meditation, my prayer journal, my breath work, 
as well as things like my supplements and just my general mood. I will rate my day from one to three. I don't like doing one to 10 because that's too many options and I get lost in the nuance of how I'm feeling. So one is very bad, two is meh, it was a good day, three is like super dope. So I like to keep it simple like that. Other than my morning routine, because I am so all over for the month of May, I'm just leaving a large area for monthly reminders, notes, checklists, pretty much anything I need to write down. Because this month is full of so many different types of projects, I didn't want to narrow in on a specific list in this section. I wanted to keep it broad across all of my hobbies so it can include things like homesteading or gardening or maybe something to do with work or social events. I wanted to keep my options wide open. <laughs> Something that is a little different as well is I've kind of thrown out using rulers. It's not that I don't like straight, straight lines. It's that the mental ease that kind of comes with freeing myself up from being super precise is more valuable to me than having super straight, clean and linear lines. Maybe that makes sense to you, maybe it doesn't, but for me, being able to sit down just with some felts and a pen and whip up a fun new monthly spread is really rewarding and satisfying. I'm going in and just kind of tacking in very loosely some green leaves. I'm not adding any kind of veining or any details. This is just to fill up some of that dead space. I want the areas of the page that I'm not using to feel quite full. That way the areas that I'm going to be using for my trackers or my calendars or my lists kind of pop out a bit more. It adds some definition and some contrast with the green in there as well and it makes the page feel a lot more complete to me. We are on to the weekly spreads. Now, before I get too far into this, I will say that I messed up numbering the days of the week because I switched things up and decided to do kind of an alternating pattern. Right after I filmed this, I ended up going and buying some whiteout and then fixing my mistakes later on, but there's definitely going to be a numbering error. So if you notice that, I'm aware I have fixed it. For me, that is why it's important to remember that the reason I do my bullet journal is to stay organized and to make sure that I am keeping track of what's important and I'm getting my to-do lists done. It's not necessarily to have a perfect journal. That's why I'm a little bit more okay and I can give myself some grace when it comes to mistakes and I don't mind using whiteout in here. <laughs> That's the kind of energy I have behind this entire month or all the months of spring just because there is so much going on and we're trying to be so productive you just have to go lightly on yourself give yourself some grace things are going to be missed you're 
running around trying to get a bunch of different projects going things are exciting people want to visit and the whole world kind of wakes up in the springtime getting really hard on yourself when you don't maybe achieve as much as you should or when you have to adjust and change your original plans is not productive and doesn't really serve you at least not for myself or in my experience so i'm trying to take on the attitude and the approach of going lightly and being gentle this season. I've got a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts, and I don't feel like it helps me to be rough on myself when I don't achieve maybe as much as I would have hypothetically liked to. It's all about the process. We're sinking into the very chill, relaxed energy of springtime, and we are calling in some beautiful flowers. <laughs> On that note, we are getting some baby chickens this month. I'm very excited about that. Having chickens on the homestead just feels kind of like a rite of passage. This is going to be our first time doing any type of meat or raising out any kind of animal and endeavoring into the animal husbandry world. So starting off with some meat chickens and we are looking at getting some meat rabbits as well. The chickens come first, they're coming on May 6th, so we have a lot of construction projects to get started for that, but that's one of the big projects coming up. If you have not yet, I would recommend subscribing to the channel, especially if you're into homesteading, gardening, sustainability, or getting back to living seasonally. I am pumping out a lot of content around developing Tamterra here. So come hang out, come watch some gardening videos if you are so inclined and share in that spring good time juju. The next month after May is June, as you may know. June marks the kind of first month of the three months that I consider summer. So June, July, and August here is when the environment is the most summer-like. That's slightly different wherever you live, but I find that living in accordance to the wheel of the year, the pagan sabbats, and dividing up my bullet journal that way allows me to remain very in touch with the seasons and kind of plan my life a little bit better. If you haven't checked it out, I will link to the video in the cards above where I show you setting up my springtime projects page. This is another way that I stay on top of living seasonally is dividing my large project lists into the seasons. So I'll link that for you to check out if you would like. I hope you guys have enjoyed my May Pagan plan with me. I am very excited to start some seeds on May 1st. It is always very exciting and joyous when the seed starting days line up with the Pagan Sabbaths. It seems very ceremonial and it becomes very ritualistic and honoring of the seasons when I get to sow some seeds on Ostara or Beltane. It just kind of seems divinely timed as it were so very excited about that like i mentioned we've got our chickens coming spring is in the air the flowers the dandelions the bumblebees everything is really waking up so i hope you can stay grounded and really take your time to smell the wildflowers enjoy the freshness of the season and i will see you all back here very shortly with another video and heading into the summer months as always, may the force be with you. Bye-bye for now.